Before listening on, please pause the video and try the question as best as you can. To proceed in solving this question, what we can do is draw a free body diagram for one of the two masses. Why don't we arbitrarily pick this one? It turns out there are three forces acting on that charge. We have the downward gravitational force, which we have labeled mg. We have the tension force that's present because of the rope is pulling up on the mass, and we've labeled that tension. And then we have an electrical force that's directed to the left. The reason that it's directed to the left is because each mass has the same electrical charge. And we know that when two objects have the same charge, they would repel one another. So this mass on the left is being repelled to the left. And that repulsion force is actually an electrical force. So we've labeled that Fe. Now because the tension force is acting at an angle, we're going to need to break it into its y and x components. We can draw the y component projected straight up along the y axis. And then the x component will be projecting to the right. So we'll go ahead and add some arrowheads to show that. To come up with expressions for these components, we could use some trigonometry. So notice that the x component is across or opposite to the 5 degree angle, and therefore we can label that as t sine of 5 degrees. And then the y component is adjacent to the 5 degree angle, so we can label it as being t cosine of 5 degrees. Once we've drawn and labeled the components of tension, we can go ahead and remove the resultant tension force, the red tension force from the diagram, because we just want to be working with the components of these forces. Now, because this mass is stated as being in equilibrium, we know that the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to zero, as well as the sum of the forces in the y direction. Starting with the x direction, we can see that there are two forces acting in the x direction. We have the positive t sine of five degrees and the negative Fe, negative because it's pointing to the left. So we can include those in the sum of the forces in the x direction. We could then add the electrical force over to the other side. And when we do that, we can see that the electrical force is equal in magnitude to the tension times the sine of 5 degrees. This is not a result that we can really work with yet because we don't know the tension. Let's turn to the sum of the forces in the y direction next. And we have two forces acting in that direction as well. We have the positive T cosine of 5 degrees and the negative mg force, negative because it's pointing straight down. We could add mg over to the right side of this equation and then divide by the cosine of 5 degrees. And this way, we're going to isolate T and as we'll see, that's going to be helpful. The reason that's helpful is because we can take this expression for tension and we can plug it into the tension of the original equation that we had derived for the x direction. And then if we look carefully, we can see we have the sine of five degrees divided by the cosine of five degrees. That can be simplified to just tangent of five degrees. Now, let's not forget that the electrical force is equal to the following. We have the Coulomb's constant multiplied by the magnitude of the two charges and then divided by the distance between the charges squared. What we need to do is come up with an expression for the distance between the two charges. And to do that, we can form a right triangle in the following manner. We can label the hypotenuse as just simply L, since the hypotenuse would be the length of the string that's connected to the mass. We can see that this distance right here is opposite to the angle, so perhaps we can just call that opposite. And therefore, the sine of the angle is going to equal the opposite side that we just labeled divided by the hypotenuse, which is labeled L. And then if we multiplied both sides of this equation by L, we would see that the opposite side is L times the sine of theta. Now keep in mind, we don't just want this distance. That's only half of the distance from the one mass to the other. We actually need to double up that distance in order to get the complete distance from the mass to the other mass. So in fact, the entire distance between the two masses will actually become two times L sine of theta. So that's an expression that we can use and we can plug it in to where we have labeled the distance in the Coulomb's law force. Now, as for the charges Q, remember that they had the same electric charge, so we can just arbitrarily call each one Q. We would then have Q times Q, which would become Q squared. So here's a simplified form of the electrical force, and we can make a substitution right into there. We can replace Fe with this expression in the blue brackets. Okay, so remember, our goal is to calculate the magnitude of the charge, so we're looking for Q. And so to isolate Q, we're gonna have to multiply both sides by 2L sine theta squared. And what that will do is it'll cancel it on the right side of the equation. We could then divide both sides of the equation by K. And then finally, take the square root of both sides, and of course, that's gonna change the Q squared into just Q. Now, everything on the left side is known. The mass was given, it was given in grams though, so when we plug that in, make sure you change that to kilograms by multiplying by 10 to the minus three. G is a constant, it's 9.8 of course. Theta, the angle, was given as five degrees. 
L was the length of the string, which is given in 30 centimeters. We got to make sure to change that into meters. So that'll become 0.3 meters. And then K is the Coulomb constant, and that is always equal to 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. So let's plug in all the known values. And when you do that, you should get approximately 7.2 times 10 to the minus 9, and that will be in coulombs because that's the unit of charge. If for any reason you need to convert that into nanocoulombs, you could simply multiply your result by 10 to the positive 9, and so that would just give you 7.2 nanocoulombs. So either answer is acceptable. As always, thanks very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe. And remember, you can send in your own question to the email address listed on the screen.